materials research, you can go ahead and do that. So thank you so much. Thanks. Um, so our last presenter today uh, is Dr. Jennifer Salerno from the Environmental Science and Policy Program. Thank you. Thanks for having me today and thanks for coming. Uh, next slide. So I'm in the Environmental Science and Policy Department, a wonderfully interdisciplinary department where I head up our lab, the Salerno Laboratory of Integrative Microbial Microbial Ecology, or SLIME, and that acronym was not an accident. Um, we study environmental microbes and most of the things we work with are pretty slimy. My lab is housed at the Potomac Environmental Research and Education Center, or PERIC, over in um, Aquacon, or uh, sorry, Woodbridge. And it's a fantastic new facility, as you can see depicted down in the lower picture there, right on the river. Um, what allows us easy access to uh, um, the environments we study. And there's a wonderful group of, of uh, researchers over there, not only within my department, but also outside of the department that I collaborate with. And I encourage you to check out our website and see what everyone over there is up to and working on. The research interests and themes of my lab are particularly looking at the role of microorganisms in organism health and ecosystem function. So we study things like symbiotic interactions that then are impacted by environmental stressors leading to what's called dysbiosis or the breakdown of that symbiosis and disease. And we also look at how microorganisms can inform us about ecosystem health because they are such, uh, so can so readily adapt to environmental changes and stressors. They serve as really good biological indicators. And so that's another area in which we work. Finally, um, being in the ESP department, I have a real interest in science and policy. And so I have, have worked in the federal government as a fellow in Congress and at the um, Department of State. And me, along with some of my other fellow fellow alumni, um, have band together and we've started to offer courses in science policy that'll start this summer. And we're working on developing a minor for undergraduates in science policy. So please reach out if you're interested in that. So students coming through my lab, I try to get them um, exposed to sort of these four areas of research and that are really important to develop as a scientist and that are critical in our lab, but they also allow them to kind of figure out where, what they like, right? So I try to get them engaged in field work, sample collection, learning molecular techniques and microscopy in the lab that we use to study our microbes. Um, we work with a lot of big data sets, so sequencing, so doing bioinformatics and multivariate statistical analysis. And then finally, outreach is a really important component as well. So getting them engaged, how to convey their, their research to um, different audiences and also engage the community. Um, so we do work on a lot of different things across that span, as I mentioned, but the one I'll touch on today is this disease we're studying, <clears throat> excuse me, called stony coral tissue loss disease. And it's this disease that's infecting reef building corals in Florida and across the Caribbean. So it first showed up in Florida in about 2014 and has since spread and is actively spreading across the Caribbean. So we're studying the sort of coral zoonotic epidemic during this pandemic. Um, luckily we already had the samples because we can't travel much now to collect them. Um, but it is a major concern because it impacts over 24 species of reef building corals. And so down here is a picture of a coral that's been infected. So the brownish spots are where the healthy tissue is still remaining. And this is the active lesion and it's completely eroded the tissue. And so it's got about a 50% mortality rate and it's very lethal to these corals. And so it's of concern because those reefs are already impacted. So as of now, we are trying to identify the culprit. What is causing this disease? And we don't uh, know. There's a, a group of national and international scientists um, working together on this. It's, uh, it was first observed in reefs offshore. So that's kind of interesting because it's away from population centers, but it is in areas where there are a lot of cruise ship activities. So it's thought that it is waterborne and it may have been um, transported by passing cruise ships. Again, we don't know the pathogenic agent, whether it's a bacteria, a virus, a fungus, or if it's some sort of general stress response. And we're working to identify that, but it is there is some evidence that might be bacterial in nature because out of um, um, resource managers trying to find ways to abate the disease, they've started to apply antibiotics and it has caused cessation of the spread of the disease. So whether or not the bacteria is a secondary infection or the cause is being determined, so my research group, along with my colleague, Esther Peters, are using both molecular approaches and um, microscopy to uh, look inside the coral tissue and see what's going on. So we're looking at the bacteria that are present, who's there, where they are found within the coral tissue, as well as um, uh, fungi that live in the skeleton. And we're looking at this endosymbionts that live in the corals called 
symbiodinium or symbiodiniaceae, and they are photosynthetic and they live in a beneficial symbiosis with the corals. But what's interesting is some of the um, initial results have looked at the coral tissue and found that this disease is almost eating the corals from the inside out, starting from where those symbiodinium or symbiodiniaceae are. So we're binding together to do that. And then through our coral reef ecology courses, we're also training students to do coral ID, and we're hoping to take them down to Roatan, where this disease just showed up in this fall to do some surveys of uh, healthy and diseased corals there. Next slide, please. Um, so our, we like to think our, our research has a, a global reach um, and we really uh, approach our research through the lens of understanding the importance between uh, the link between human health and ecosystem health. So we try to answer basic science questions, but at the same time develop environmental monitoring tools that can help uh, with policy guidance and for resource managers. So we have a variety of state and federal funding um, for our research. And these are just some pictures of some of my grad students, undergrad and high school students that are performing uh, field work. Um, I have a student studying a disease in striped bass in the Chesapeake Bay. And then one of my other students doing molecular work in the lab. So as mentioned previously, ways that students can reach out, I think for all of the speakers today are through the ACIP programs. Oscar has several programs, the URSP or USRP, I always get that backwards. There's work study and just reaching out um, to us and, and seeing what maybe volunteer or other paid opportunities might be available. So thank you for your attention. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I have a question is, when you identify what is infecting these corals, is this a situation where the damage can be reversed or is this a situation where we're just trying to stop the damage in its tracks and not have it go any further? Yeah, great question. There's so much still yet to be learned. So in some cases, it seems that some, so first of all, some corals like the branching corals, this doesn't impact them. Many other species it does. Some seem to be able to recover and fight off the disease. Others don't and die. And others, as I mentioned, if you apply an antibiotic paste, it can stop that disease spread across the colony like the picture I showed and they can recover. Um, so we still don't know what it's, the underpinnings of the genetics, the other environmental stressors, all the things that are interplaying into the spread of this disease. Um, something that recently came out is someone did an experiment and saw that it can infect Pacific corals, but it hasn't spread there yet. So we're trying to avoid that, but it is definitely a concerning situation. Thank you. Um, 